Hey, I'm Alicia Bake. I'm Jen Greenfield. And I'm Jen Tifoni. VO Booth Besties listen to the questions you have. We find pros in the know to help you learn. And connect with our amazing VO community. Welcome, Welcome to, to VO, VO Booth, Booth Besties. Besties. I love that. Welcome, everyone, to VO Booth Besties. Like our intro said, we're here to help working voice actors get your most important questions answered by industry pros who know. Each week, we'll have a new topic and a guest speaker who is an expert on that topic. Speaking of which, we want to be sure you're all current on the awesome speakers we have coming up and other exciting opportunities. If you want to be in the know, make sure you're on our email list. If you'd like to be added, simply swing by our website, boothbesties.com, and shoot us a message with your email. Lastly, if you haven't joined our VO Booth Besties Facebook group, join us there too. Now, a quick bit of housekeeping in order to stay on topic and get as many of your questions answered as we can. We're going to keep hand raising turned off. However, the chat will remain open. And this week, AB will be monitoring that. So I am super excited to welcome Roger Becker and to introduce him. Roger Becker has 30 years vested in the VO business, from starting as a recording mix engineer in studio to directing talent and then working as an agent in broadcast promotions. Roger then moved full-time into VO casting as vice president of Just Voices Casting and then the owner of the VO Syndicate. In 2022, Roger acquired and expanded the Access Talent Group. They now represent VO talent all over the world. Roger, I'm, I just have to tell a little backstory about you to our guests. Um, a couple of years ago, I was feeling pretty frustrated in my career. I was booking consistently online and through direct marketing, but I really felt ready for agency representation, but I wasn't getting anywhere. I was submitting and submitting and just spinning my wheels. And um, that was right around 2020 somewhere. And I'm, it was just the industry was saturated and I just wasn't making traction. So Deb Sperling suggested I coach with you, Roger Becker, to give me an edge and make sure I was marketable. And guys, that was the best coaching course that I have ever taken. At the time, he was teaching a four-week course, and um, I fully credit the success of my career since then to Roger. I just, it was great. Sadly, I don't believe you're coaching anymore, Roger. Is that correct? And we should mention how you unmute bottom Right-hand corner of your screen is a microphone. You're going to want to click on that, and that will unmute you. Thank you, because I wouldn't have found that without you. <laughs> Welcome to Clubhouse, Roger. Thanks for having me. I, it's uh, it's very, very nice to be here. It was a very warm introduction. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, since we're already old friends, I am actually going to turn this interview over mostly to JT and NJ and sit back a little bit. So, JT, over to you. Thank you very much. Roger, it is a pleasure to meet you. It's nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Uh, we've got some history in common. My background is also in audio engineering. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, people who like lots of little buttons and flashing lights and dark rooms. <laughs> yeah. Just leave me by myself and I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start tonight by talking a little bit about your journey. Um, how did you go from being behind a board to being an agent? Uh, I, I was in a, working in a recording studio in, in New York city up on 46th street, no longer exists, but, uh, it was a wonderful experience. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I just found that in the sessions that I was in, uh, when the voiceover talent was in there for the first half hour, 45 minutes, that was the thrill of it all. Once they left, uh, the rest of the session became, uh, not as exciting. And, uh, we happened to have a casting division that was a part of the studio and, uh, the person who was in charge of it, uh, uh, was taking a fair amount of time off. So they were constantly looking for somebody to cover the sessions. And I just started to get more and more into it. And I really developed a, a dialogue and a language with talent and uh, just a connection to it all. And that was kind of the birth of it all. And then I was fortunate to, uh, when I got out of the studio, I was fortunate to go down and work for a talent agency, uh, which was actually the former version of Access Talent and uh, and hone my craft, kind of learning how to direct talent in their booth for, for several years. Okay, so it, it went from just... Riding the faders to 
actually starting to direct. Yeah, the the mixed process uh, lacked a. a cre- I, I think I had a, a somewhat naive dream coming out of school that uh, that there was more creativity in it all, and I found it to be a little bit limited. I found it to be a, it tended to be a producer sitting behind me, kind of telling me where, what to do and where to put everything. And um, so, like I said, once the VO talent left, I, I thought the the energy of the session kind of left, and uh, I, I wanted to be a part of that energy. That is very cool. Very cool. So tell us about Accent Talent. How did how did that whole thing evolve? Uh, well, like I said, I, I worked there for uh, for several years uh, back in the day. Um, I worked directing talent in their booth and then eventually moved out uh, and worked in their broadcast promotions department. Um, then I, I left there for and went back to casting where I spent the, the bulk of my career. But I had an opportunity uh, during the pandemic when the casting business had, had just changed as everybody knows mm-hmm. um, during the pandemic. And I had an opportunity to kind of come back and, uh, and, and take it over. And, and that's what I did. Very cool. What kind of projects do, do you typically work on at access? Access works on everything voiceover. So commercials, audiobooks, narration, dubbing, industrials, political. We also have a stellar vo- a video game and animation department run by Alyssa Blumenthal. Uh, she handles all of our interactive work. So if it's voiceover, we work on it. Do you have a favorite? Um, I, I was always a commercial guy. I have I have taken a love to audiobooks. Audiobooks was something that I had worked on a bit in the early part of my career when I was casting in house. But once uh, once I went into kind of the, the private sector of casting, there's not much budget in in audiobooks for casting, so it just kind of was off my radar for several years. But coming back to it in the agency world, um, I was I wasn't apprehensive about it. I just uh, I wasn't very comfortable with it at first. But I found that that world is uh, a very friendly and very accommodating and, and very sort of relaxed group of people. Um, and then the uh, the minute to minute, second to second heart attack that is commercials. Uh, audiobooks can kind of be a can kind of be a nice little walk sometimes. So, <laughs> um, but but I, I'm a commercial guy at heart. I would have to agree. And audiobooks scare the daylights out of well, me. Well, yeah, and and you know, people people learn that hopefully not the hard way. Um, but uh, but yeah, you need to find that out about yourself. It takes a special breed. It really does, for sure. And you know, just the the whole process behind the audiobook and the editing and and the time involved is. And that doesn't, and that doesn't scratch the surface of the research and everything right. else that goes into it ahead of time. Yeah, and uh, you know, and uh, it sort of sort of limits you not just during the day, uh, but it also limits your evenings in terms of what you can do. Considering you really need to be on vocal rest and preserving yourself and reading sections of the book for the next day, it's a it's a fully in, involved and invested process for sure. Yeah, and character development and just Ex- extremely rewarding to the actor who who does enjoy it though. Um, it, it's one of uh, like I said, I think it's one of the the more artistic parts of our craft. Yeah, I, and I have the attention span for commercial, <laughs> commercial promo. Get, get me in there, you know. We'll bang it out, and and we'll move on. I'm sure. And that's why I was thinking I really enjoy doing children's books, so <laughs> it gives me a minute longer than commercial, but not a full audio book. Yeah, so. we're, yeah, we're, we're starting an audio pamphlet division. I'll let you guys yes! know. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> That's interesting. I haven't heard about that. <laughs> what are what are audio pamphlets? Oh, I was kidding. They're okay, <laughs> that could be a thing. Start though. it. We could be the new people that that bring that on. We. Oh my gosh, a new genre was born tonight, right here. Audio pamphlets. Why not? We have to read ISIs, right? <laughs> All those those medical narration things that that nobody wants to really listen to, but it has to be there. Pamphlets could be a thing. <laughs> So, um, one of the questions that, that talent ask pretty much whenever they get a chance to ask it to an agent is how do I get representation? Now, obviously that question is going to vary a lot depending on the person they're asking. So we'd like to dig into your process. Uh, well, you know, obviously the, you know, when you have a personal connection or something that helps quite a bit. Um, but, uh, if, uh, if, if in terms of just sort of, uh, you know, cold calling as it were, um, you know, obviously your demo is, is at the, at the, at the, the front of the line. Um, if, if your demo isn't, uh, you know, ear catching, if it's not, uh, if there's not something interesting about it, if there's not something dynamic about it, uh, you know, we'll, we'll move past it. Um, but, uh, but I, I would say a, a quick, concise, uh, professional note, um, either a link or the demo attached. I, I'm, I'm not entirely, I'm sure other agencies have different philosophies on this and, 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 
gatekeep in different ways. But uh, one of the, the things that I would, I would suggest people not do is email a question of how do I submit my demo? If you have the email address to our company, you can submit your demo. There's, there's not really a, a question of how to do it necessarily. And, and that's kind of a, an extra communication that, that sometimes I don't enjoy. Um, but, uh, but, but every demo that comes through our doors gets heard. Um, we try and respond to just about everything, but uh, that's, that's a difficult, uh, almost impossible endeavor, but we do try. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, so you led me right into the next question. Um, we've had people ask, about their their demos. Do you prefer it, pre- pre- it be produced by a well-known company who does demos or would you rather hear a demo that's a compilation of someone's actual work? I, I don't honestly think that anybody necessarily listens to a demo and considers whether or not they're real spots or not. I've, I've been doing this a long time and uh, I, I'm not interested in guessing or trying to figure that out. It doesn't really fascinate me. I'm listening to the demo reel to hear a range of different styles and different reads. And if that's captured best in spots that you create in a studio or that you've lifted from actual sessions, I, I kind of don't sort of care. Okay. Um, uh, I, I'm much more interested in the material itself. In terms of who makes it, uh, once again, uh, I don't know if if how much of an opinion I have there. I think by and large, the better demos that I hear are done by professionals um and 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 demo producers who know what they're doing but every so often uh you know somebody will put a demo by me that's quote unquote homemade or you know uh made by somebody who's not necessarily a, a vo pro and still we hear something or something appeals to us that breaks out interesting but i definitely think that if 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 as as a person who would be making the investment uh, and somebody who is trying to advance my career, I certainly think that I would engage a professional. I, I think it's, I think it can be very, very tricky and very difficult to do on your own. Even if you have the technical background, um, once again, we're into a place of self-directing. Uh, it just, it, it's, it's a much trickier process. Well, let's stay with that for a minute because Brian has asked, um, kind of, uh, I don't know, as a gauge, do you normally listen to or do most agents listen to the entire demo? Or are you kind of waiting for the hook and you make it about two spots in? Uh, there's no way I'm going to speak for most agents. Uh, no, I'll no, tell fair, you my fair. process. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you my process. Um, you know, uh, a kind of a couple things and, and these aren't necessarily hard and fast rules. I'm not counting. Um, but I want to be into the third spot 30 seconds in. If I'm still in spot two and we're 30 seconds into the reel, maybe it's my attention span. Um, Maybe it's just how many demos I listen to in a day, but I want it moving a little bit quicker than that. I don't really feel that any spot should be, including the first spot, should be longer than 12 or 13 seconds. Um, People in my position, we get it at that point. We don't need to necessarily hear more of that. I know sometimes with shaping and and with mixing or, or edit points, you need to extend something with a music bed. I get that, or the read needs to go a little bit longer. But for the most part, get me there. Um, and, and most importantly, start with just you walking down the sidewalk telling me something about your life. I don't really care what the product is. Um, I, I just want, I want to meet you in that first spot. Uh, too many people try and go for showboating in the first spot or something that's ear grabbing in all the wrong ways. Um, that's kind of aggressive or that's over the top. And, and I'd much rather just kind of walk alongside you and get to know you for, for a couple of seconds before we start playing the, 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 the range game. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, fantastic analogy. I absolutely love that. Uh, let's walk with Roger, everyone. That will be our quote for tomorrow. <laughs> um, but also, no, I mean, in all honesty, you really are validating when we have been speaking with other folks, under other industry pros and talking about demos, you're really reinforcing that, um, the same information. And so I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and the only thing that I think that that's the, the only trend that, again, I listen to a lot of demos, so I say this in a, just in a very general sense, but uh, th- there is a trend of, of people when they make demos to kind of, even if, they op- if they're smart enough to open with real, they immediately drop in that second spot into something luxury or, or, or just very lacquered and very polished, whether it's, uh, whether it's a car or, or uh, jewelry or something like that. Um, and I, I think everybody thinks that's a great kind of yin yang to open with, uh, you know, to go one way and then go the other immediately. Um, I, I find that I find that a little bit off putting personally. Um, I, I, I don't want to go to anything that artificial that quick. Um, I'd really rather stay real for for, again, at least the first couple of spots is, or at least as real as possible. 
that was what that was the direction I was given when I produced my most recent um, commercial demo as well. And because that was a trend where you went, hi, this is me. And then whoop, just <laughs> dropped into something else. But then but then the only way you can go from there is all the way back up. Right. Mm -hmm. so you, you, you know, it is kind of jarring. And you're like, I appreciate you're trying to show me range. But I'm like, what is happening? So I did that very thing. And and I was really happy with how it worked out. Just kind of like you said, come in as you, let's get to know you a little bit more, and then you can kind of bounce around after that. So, yeah, I like and that. And I, I also think that I think the, the better promo producers out there, or the, or the I'm sorry, the better um, demo producers out there are, are fine-tuning these things a bit more, and they're really trying to get the personality of the person out there. Um, you know, as a, as a for instance, um, it, it, years ago, all women had a beauty spot on their reel. Not all women need to have a beauty spot on their reel <laughs> nowadays. Um, yeah. First of all, first of all, the volume of that work is not as uh, is, is not as percentage present as it was back in the day. And even still, um, it's just not something that everybody needs to attack and get after. Um, so, you know, sometimes it, you make the smart choice for yourself or, or for yourself as an individual and you don't just follow the trends, you know, to that tune, not every guy needs a, a Ford F-150 spot on his reel. It's just not necessary. Ah, oh, okay. So you are just the perfect person to interview because you were leading me straight into my next question. I want to talk about the current trends in VO. Um, 2020, of course, we shifted away from the millennial trend to comforting and connected, which gave way to the last two years of not announcery and not salesy and real person conversational. Are we starting to see a shift again? I think that no, I, I think the, I think the real person conversational, and, that, and that's a that's a that's a really sort of general category, but um, that 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 has been on the map for a lot longer. Um, I, I don't know if everybody was as in tune to it or is paying as much attention as the advertisers and the, the creative agencies wish the actors were. I think there were far too many actors in the business who would have been better served to keep the announcer tones in there <laughs> and keep those those hard reads in there. So um, people were kind of less willing to go there. But we're we're we're, we're well well into the age of the actor in this business and that's not going anywhere um you can throw anything at me um and and i'll still defend the, the actor as as kind of the heart and soul of this business um so real person conversational isn't going anywhere it's more important than ever i think it will continue to be uh getting your point of view in there getting your emo uh, your emotions in there uh getting your reactions in there your physicality your expressions um and, and the things that make you unique th those are those are important important traits to get in really every read you do nowadays Pharma, pharma is a, a specific, uh, to, to go and step further. Pharma is a great example of that. Uh, I think there's a there's a large struggle going on uh, with a lot of folks out there in the business nowadays in terms of trying to understand and place their reads for pharma, and especially on the testimonial side of things. And I think it comes a lot easier to people who have actor training. I'm not for a moment suggesting that you have to come from from a dramatic background to work in voiceovers, but I do think that there are a lot of areas where it helps considerably. And, and I think that like pharma testimonial is one of those. I think it comes a, a lot easier in hand to, to folks who come from that background than people who have come into the business uh, through other avenues, more, vo more voice driven avenues. Yeah. I think um, also coming from a radio background, it's, it, that's a hard bridge to gap. Oh yeah, yeah. No, people with radio backgrounds. I mean, it's a the the, the, the danger with them is there's always that clock running. Um, I know this <laughs> from my own experience. I came up in radio in in my very formative years uh, of college and things like that. But um, it, it's hard to get away from that, and you wind up starting to tail you know, the back ends of your reads to hit an imaginary clock that nobody else is paying attention to. So we're leading right into just how important are the specs. Um, I'm not a big spec guy in terms of obsessing over them. Um, I, I think uh, anybody who's heard me uh, speak in the past has heard me say um, stronger things about <laughs> uh, about them, as in, you know, read them once with a bemused smile on your face and get on with your life. Um, that's kind of how I look at it. Um, you want to be aware of them. Uh, they, they certainly can inform. But the last thing you want to do is obsess over them, especially when there's references involved, uh, celebrity references or, or clips uh -huh. and things like that. Yes. Um, that 
that that can be that can be more defeating than helpful. But again, I'm not I, I, I am not telling anybody to turn their back on them. I do think it's something that you have to to, to watch, you know, for however long you need to um, or, or be aware of. And it's the same with, again, reading through specs. But ultimately, I believe the answer to every script lies in the words of the script itself. I I, I would take that over specs any day of the week. I could not agree with that more. It writing. That's what, it, you know, when you talk about, you know, a joy for audiobooks and things like that, you can have a beautiful voice, but if the writing is not there, it is not going to capture, you know, your imagination. It is not, you're not going to be able to visualize what's happening, um, you know, and get your audience's attention, right? And so I 100% agree with you when when you've got good writing and then can complement it with a good voice, magic. Yeah, and I think I think the real work, again, is, is breaking down the script, not so much uh, overanalyzing a spec. So there's a lot of words in the in the in the spec department that are just overused and and regurgitated. Um, I've I've famously told the story, but I, as a producer friend I have in the business who who told me once he's like I don't even know what gravitas means. I just put it in every spec because the boss I had 20 <laughs> years ago did, and I thought you know it, it netted him results. So I just kind of throw it in there, but I really don't know what, what have any idea what that means. And I, I I don't I don't I don't know. I, I think that's a little bit probably more common than we think it is. I think that. Um the equivalent to that that I see all the time is uh, people referencing Scarlett Johansson's voice in She as uh, a real... Yeah, her. yeah, I think the film was her, but yes, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, her, I'm, okay. I'm overly familiar with that spec, yes. Oh, my word. And it I is get it so, a lot, too. It, it just doesn't... That is not real. <laughs> you may as well be talking to your Amazon product <laughs> well again you know when it comes to specs the same thing i you know you look it over again you see what you want to take from it um this is kind of my same view of 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 people who take voiceover classes and, and work with coaches and things like that don't assume you're going to get all the answers from one well yeah uh, yeah you, you take what you can from it and then you, you push aside what you don't want um if something in the spec uh, jives with you and makes sense with you run with it grab grab a hold of it you know what one one winning tangible thing out of a out of a blurb of specs is actually Actually, a win. Grab that one thing and go in that direction. Um, but but what, what doesn't work for you, or or what makes you roll your eyes, or, or what have you, you know, push that away. Uh, I'll give you another one. When they send you, um, uh, uh, you know, when they send you a read of of somebody who's in the production process because they think it helps with timing or phrasing or something like that, and you listen to it, and it, it sets everything you know about voiceover back twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, again, you have to know that you just kind of smile and, you know, you, you, you try and find something to take from it, even though, again, it's, you're not going to learn anything VO wise from it. I think this is uh, what you're saying, Roger. I love so much because recently I've done a lot of coaching the last couple of years and it seems like we hear the same, we hear, we hear contradicting things from really big people. And there, one person is saying, analyze the specs and pay attention to every detail of the specs. And then the next person is saying, throw the specs out. Don't even look at them. And then someone else is saying, you know, look at every word in the copy and, and really highlight certain words. And others are saying, never do that. And some people are saying, um, I just heard someone say, never, ever, ever improv, never use any vocalizations. And someone I, I, literally, yeah, like, I couldn't, yeah. dis I couldn't disagree with that more. So yeah, exactly. I, I, again, exactly. it's a, it's a subjective business and everybody's entitled to their own opinions. And yeah, people are, are, are selling these programs or, or selling their, their, their different methodologies and, and things like that. And again, that's why you need to go in with an open mind. You need to, if you, hopefully you vetted the person. Hopefully you're there because somebody referred you to this person or, you, or you've heard good things. And so you go in there and you try and, and take what you can from them, take, take what's good and what's positive. I'm not just trying to sell everybody on a like, you know, keep your eyes open, be positive. Things will come to you. That's not it at all. It's much more of a, of a pay attention, tune in. And, and there's got to be something valuable, something you can use in there. It's the same with, I always, I have always preferred group classes over individual coaching i mean i it, those people who are at a, a higher advanced level not so much but but anybody else i think group classes are the way to go i think you're going to learn as much from other people in that room no matter what their 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 skill level is i think it helps when it's when there's varied skill levels in the room but but often things can become so much more obvious to you when you watch it through another uh, soul even if they're being tortured in the booth at the time um so I think that that's that's hugely valuable. I think too many people immediately go to this one on one coaching where you're just banging scripts out in a, a short amount of time at such a rate that I, I'm not sure how much of the lesson is really being imparted or sticking with the talent. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. And I love what you said that, you know, like you look at the specs and what what reaches out to you and what 
what you find of yourself in the script is what you really want to dial into. And that's beautiful. That, that, that's it. You're, you're, you're looking for any tangible parts of yourself that you can get in there. If you can find some, some part of that character that's true to you, that's, uh, that, that's real to you, that's part of your life experience, uh, you, you're in a much better place than you were five minutes ago. Do you have any other tips for talent walking into their booths for an audition? Um, work it out ahead of time. Um, you know, again, everybody with their different theories, you know, some people are, have the, if you don't have it in three takes, you're never going to get it. I, 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 I don't really subscribe to that. I, I, I think that's, boy, I would, I would hate to see the movies and the, 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 the Broadway shows and the, and, and read the books that were treated with that kind of little care. Um, so, you know, I, I think you, you want to work it out at the at your kitchen table or w- walking around your living room or taking your dog for a walk, kick some of the language around, work out the phrasings, uh, anything that you can do to try and create runs that make that language more your own and then bring it into the mic and don't expect perfection and dear God, don't seek it. Um, nobody's looking for perfection in this business. I, I've said this a million times, but you know, bookings are science, auditions are art. Um, uh, keep it live, keep it real. D- don't try and lock it into timing. Um, we, we see people coming in from the production side more and more uh, 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 as VO talent. And sometimes people think they're, they're doing favors when they're cutting this to a point where you could just slap it right into the mix edit at, at the, at the facility. You're not helping yourself in that situation. You're really just chopping your read up and creating, uh, an inhuman cadence and, and rhythm and run. Um, so don't try and do other people's jobs. Stay, stay, stay the actor. How many times have we said that you are not? The oh, we'll see now. I'm not, <laughs> then I'm boring everyone. Oh, no, no you're not. <laughs> I'm literally uh, taking like, notes. <laughs> we're like shaking our pom poms, doing high kicks over here. <laughs> All right, then, then I'm affirming. This is great. This is, yes. this is wonderful. This is like Sunday service. Well, there's been quite a bit of discussion recently in the online voiceover community about specifically, should I cut out my breath? Should I edit my no. auditions? Should I, you know, and, and what you're saying is just, just act. Focus on the yeah, act. do, do not. And now, uh, yeah, don't edit your breath. I mean, if you gasp for air because you have to carry some, you know, long three sentence clothes or something like that, um, by all means, you can get that out of there if it's going to be uneasy to my ears. But, um, but uh, no, we, we don't want you chopping these things up. Um, again, even those of you who are or believe yourselves to be qualified, uh, that's just not what we're looking for. We want it to be real and organic and breathing is a part of life. It's a part of conversational. You can't ask somebody to be conversational and tell them not to breathe. So one more um, quick thing. Now, Alicia tells us that you have mentioned being the alpha in the booth. Tell us what that means. Uh, it, it, it means get in there and, 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 and win it and be the, be the leader of the group. If, uh, you know, you see that spec all the time of being the best friend, the one who can do this, that, or the next thing, or lead it, it treat every audition like that. Um, whatever it is, be the mostest uh, for lack of a better way of saying it. Um, you know, uh, again, be, be that, be that, be that person that everybody would turn to for, for that advice or the person somebody would come to for that advice. Um, uh, you know, I famously always say I, I wouldn't go to my financial advisor for plumbing advice and I wouldn't go to my plumber for financial advice. Um, think who the person is and, and think who they are and then, and, and put yourself up there. B- believably so, uh, you deserve to be in that seat. You deserve to be the person that the person came to for advice or came to, to ask your opinion of, of whatever it is. And, and that's the place of confidence you should be delivering from. Nice. But don't play, but you know, the, the other, the other, the other side of that is, is don't play for second place because that doesn't net you a check. <laughs> Absolutely. Everybody, we're at the half hour mark. We'd like to thank today's sponsor, Dan Friedman at Sound for VO, professional coaching for voice and sound. Dan offers transformational coaching with undeniable results. And we're excited to share that Dan's new book, Zen and the Art of VoiceOver, is now available on Book Baby. If you have questions or you're interested in coaching with Dan, reach out by email to Dan at sound4vo.com. You'll find the link to sound4vo and email in the chat. All right. And we are at the halfway mark. So we're going to do a quick room reset. If you have just joined us, we are VO Booth Besties. Our goal is to help working actors get the answers to their questions from pros who know. Tonight, we're joined by Roger Becker, Managing Partner at Access Talent and um, before we continue, we did have a couple questions from our Facebook group. Um, NJ, you want to grab those? I can do that. Okay. 
Ari Wong commented, I think a lot of us worry about being branded difficult to work with versus speaking up for what we need. Like a break, sorry, I'm trying to read and this at the same time, like a break when we're doing vocally taxing scenes. Could you give us an example of how a difficult to work with person handled something and how they could have handled it better? I'm not... Is that uh, something you can well, speak I, to? I, I, try, I try and not work with people who are difficult to work with. But, you know, every so often somebody breaks through the net. Um, I, uh, I think that um, you have to remember that you are an extension of your, uh, an ambassador of your agency. And then you're an ambassador of the business. You're an ambassador of the casting director, if there was one involved. And, uh, and so you need to carry yourself a certain way. Um, not every booking goes according to plan, and uh, and sometimes the schedule can be uh, c- can appear to be accommodating in the morning, and by mid afternoon, it's 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 condensed on you. But communication is the key. You need to have an open channel and be able to get in touch with you, with your agent and allow them to 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 manage the situation and handle the situation for you. Uh, a talent getting directly involved and going head to head in a booking or or in a situation that they're uncomfortable with is not typically the best idea um this is why agents exist this is why you have uh, management if that's what you choose to have okay that's excellent um you know what before we keep going actually i'm gonna take us off off the questions we have right now can you explain to people what an agent does i don't even know if we covered that kind of fundamentally because i think some people do kind of make agents and managers synonymous or our casting direct because even that question kind of made me think wait I don't know that that applied to you. So I'm curious, do you mind sharing kind of fundamentally what an agent does for voiceover? Sure. Well, all, all agencies are different and all agents are different in how they go about uh, their, their jobs. But for, from our standpoint, um, we, we seek opportunity and, and try and create uh, avenues of work for, for our roster of talent. Uh, we, we handle all their contracts and paperwork. We process talent payment and try and get them their their their, their payments as quickly as possible. Um, we advocate for the talent to casting directors and uh, across the country or across the world, uh, for that matter. And that includes production houses and video game houses and everybody in between. Um, we're, it's a you know it's a position that's partially sales, I suppose. We're out there trying to kind of sell the talent and sell their abilities. Uh, audiobooks is another place where that's hugely important in terms of marketing. Um, then on top of that, obviously we, we handle all the, the contractual paperwork. Um, but you know, we, we also, the, the modern agent now has really become a casting director or in my situation, a casting director has become an agent. Um, it, because that's a, a, a tremendous part of the job. I wouldn't have come I, to be honest, I wouldn't have come back to agency life if uh, a huge part of my day wasn't casting and wasn't helping talent find the right reads. Interesting. Okay. Um, what are maybe we're also there to, I'm sorry. And we're also oh, there ahead. to, we're also there to answer any questions. Um, you know, uh, th- there's a lot of times where things are not clear, uh, especially as people are, are moving up the ranks and, um, uh, making decisions about joining SAG and, and how that, what that is for their career and, and, and how that will affect things and, and how the SAG paperwork works versus, uh, the, your standard non-union contract and things like that. Uh, there, there's a, there's a lot of, of, of education, um, that goes into it as well, trying to help talent better understand things and better forecast earnings for, for, for smarter financial preparation, things like that. The other thing I hear from that too is that you're okay with working with newer talent. I mean, oh, abs- absolutely. De- de- okay. uh, helping to develop careers is uh, is 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 <laughs> I don't know the the fun of it. Um, yeah. You know, um, yeah. I mean, we you know we all love uh, we all love talented folks. We all love earners. We all love people who who have been banging it for years and 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 every year you know uh, turn in that 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 big solid number, but. Uh, but no, helping helping talent get established, helping talent get off the ground. Uh, there's, I, I'm the I'm the eight billionth agent in in America to say this, but the great thrill of it all is giving somebody their first booking. That's a, that's a real charge. Aw, I love that. That's great. What are the top three mistakes a VA a voice actor makes when seeking representation? Um. Uh, like unnecessary phone calls. Uh, okay. And and again, I, I don't just say phone calls in general, but I'll just say unnecessary phone calls um, and, and aggressive follow up. 
Um, and by that, I mean, if, 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 the, if you ask a question such as, hey, would you like to represent me? And we answer it in the negative. Um, that's not something that usually you're going to win over in a debate at that point. Um, <laughs> we're not typically we're not slamming a door in anybody's face. Um, it's often uh, bookended with the idea that, you know, our, our our talent list evolves, the business evolves, things change. So a situation could change. So there's a time frame where you might want to reapproach us if you're still not happy with where you're at or what have you. Um, but so, so, so coming back at me and trying to negotiate that decision in the moment is, is, is an awkward play for sure. Um, but, uh, but otherwise I, 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 I'll be honest. I, I work in this business because I genuinely like actors. I specifically genuinely like voice actors. Um, I don't find them <laughs> off putting or, uh, or, or I don't find them necessarily to be that much of a challenge. I, uh, in that way, I, I, I genuinely sort of, uh, like and respect what they're trying to do. It's why I try and respond to, to, to them as often as I can or or give them a note back to, to tell them that, you know, it's not a question of talent sometimes. It's just a question of a, of a fit in the agency um, and, and things like that. Those, those are, if I, if, I, if I write those things, if I make those statements, they're honest. Well, I can tell you that is, it's very thoughtful. I, it seems, I mean, because I know, we know you're busy and there's more talent than there are agents. So <laughs> I know what. It takes a minute for you to respond and 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 take time to do that, which is really nice. Um, I'm not I'm not all I'm not all you know uh, I'm not all wonderful. I mean, there's certainly those demos that roll across my desk or emails that roll across my desk where um, a couple seconds into the demo, it's a it's an immediate delete, and I'm trying yeah. to make sure that I didn't just download a virus or something. So yeah, lo- lose but. my number. Don't call me. We'll call you. Yeah, yeah I hear you. How do you feel about talent reaching out to you for feedback? on where they are in their career. Do you connect them to coaches? Is that one of those where you're like, dude, I don't have time for this? Talent that I represent? Uh, this isn't clear, but I'm going to say, oh, yeah. yes, talent yeah, I mean, you represent. Okay. Talent that I represent all day long. Um, uh, I, I, I want that communication. I want actors to reach out to me if they have a question or a concern about where their career is or, or where their their reads in general, or even a specific audition, um, they should feel free to ask that question. Um, you know, we're, we, we, the, the days are busy, as you mentioned before, and sometimes it, it might take me a, a minute or two to get back to that person. But that's a that's a fair question always. You know, there's there's a there's a fine line, I suppose, between hand holding and 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 being supportive. But we try and be supportive uh, as often as we can. And we, we want to help people get to the bottom of it. If, if they're not booking, there may be a, a reason for it. There may be something we can point to. There may be something we can help them out with um, uh, to better understand that. And along the lines of your question, sometimes that involves pointing them to a, to a coach or, or something of that nature. Yeah. All right. Well, we have some questions in the chat we would love to throw your way. Um, we'll start with Celestia Bain. She asked, should we send a short introduction email to agents when submitting? Um, usually if an agent doesn't specify, I send them a one page professional cover letter along with my demos. Is that frowned upon? It's not frowned upon. It sounds very, very professional. If that's the image that you're trying to put off as a, you know, as a kind of uh, very professional talent, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I don't so much necessarily want to read a page or digest that that information that way personally um uh, you know again a short note uh, a link to your website or or your demo i think i think actors tend to be seemingly frustrated sometimes by having to create websites or maintain websites and and i can a, a, a appreciate that as I maintain my companies and I barely know how to do that. But it is really important. It's a, it, it's a big uh, introduction. Um, I'm, uh, but I can learn more from that than I can from a professional cover letter, I'd say. I'd much, I, I want to get to the bottom of your personality. I want to learn more about you. Um, a professional cover letter is sort of geared at masking that in some way or, or putting a, a polish on it that doesn't really interest me. I'd rather find out. I'd rather meet the real you. Okay, so a website really is key to when you're researching when someone sends you an email. 
Yeah, I, a website. The, the quickest way I could say it is a website legitimizes you. And you know, I know video game companies out there that won't even listen to your tape until their their people have, have have gone through and looked for your credits or checked your IMDb page or checked your website to to, to kind of again legitimize you. Um, it, it's it, it's not that complicated of a thing. And yes, every voiceover actor should have one. All right. Okay. So Brian Tunnel asks, "Do we slate a demo?" Uh, not necessary. Um, you can, if you want to, I, I think it's, I think it's clunky, um, down the road. Um, again, for, 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 so think about it, right? You send me your demo. It has a slate on the front. You're introducing yourself to me. So I take it that way. And in that moment, it's right. Um, but then down the road, I've signed you, you're a client and now your demo exists on my website. And every time I download it, there you are slating at the beginning. And the creatives don't who are listening to that demo reel or who I'm marketing it to don't want to hear that slate at the front. So the answer to the question is like yes and no. It doesn't bother me in that moment, but I don't really think it should live there. Got it. So what about like a welcome video on someone's website? Is that something that you would click on and, and view to hear their voice and kind of get to know them a little bit more? Or is that? Oh, God, I, w- I would much rather prefer it be a professional acting reel. But if that's the extent of it, I guess. But um, uh, no, somebody rolling around in, in the wildflowers with their dog isn't <laughs> isn't as appealing to me as uh, as watching them do some scene work or, or, or watching a guest star from Law and Order or watching the... Uh, highlights of their three episode arc on whatever version of Chicago NBC is currently producing. Okay. Um, I feel like you've had some experience with that rolling around in a wildflower video. That sounds very specific, Roger. Uh, you, you know, you, you get some interesting things sent to you for sure. That's that, oh. that, that, that was a PG example, but yeah. I'll bet. Okay. So you've listened to a demo, you like what you hear, and you've set up a meeting with a talent. What are you asking or looking for during this meeting? Uh, for, first of all, <laughs> I mean, I'll say the most, the, the most important thing is there's an, a level of professionalism here. You think about where you're taking this meeting. Um, as, uh, we, we tend to, to meet people over zoom. Um, and y- you really have to, uh, keep, you really have to have a good environment or, or, you know, be sitting in the, in a place that's, that's, that's proper for a business meeting. Um, that's first and foremost, but beyond that, uh, largely we just want to get to know you. We're going to learn more about you. And what you can do in terms of being conversational and real and approachable and friendly in that meeting than we will ever learn from your demo, no matter who made it. So th- those meetings are extremely telling, um, and they're they're essentially everything to us. We 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 have certain things that are discussed, you know, as kind of just standard informational things in the meeting because everybody has those questions and wants to know them. But each meeting is unique too and goes off on different uh, different sort of tangents or um, you know different uh, different levels of conversation because uh, you know we don't just sit there and talk vo necessarily. Um, so when people have other interests or other passions or other things they like to talk about or that, that energize them or that make them vital or that make them, them spirited or that make them, uh, again, dynamic and stand out and, and, and unique, we, we want to hear those things. Uh, you may find it mundane. You may find it just part of your everyday life, but we might find it fascinating. So share. I love it. Be yourself, in yeah. other words. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> it, depending on who you, uh, get, depending on who, who you are, but that's pretty good advice for for the, for most. But you know, sometimes people have to turn it on a little bit. But yeah. Yeah. All right. So, how important, Roger, is a talent's social media presence, in your opinion? Um, it, how important is it to me? Not important. Um, I, I'm I'm an older soul. Um, I think there's a there's a, a, a different generation of folks that it matters a, a quite a bit more to. Um, I'm not, I don't shrug my shoulders at it. I I, I, I like to be aware of it, uh, but it doesn't necessarily move my meter. I also I also think it's it, a lot of it is about how it's done. Um, sometimes people like to make themselves social media experts on things and they don't necessarily have the background or necessarily the the experience um to 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 give that advice and sometimes it's just being pirated or hijacked from other places and just kind of repackaged and that can be dangerous um but i would tell the same things to my kids about social media so i don't think i'm saying anything um re- you know uh, that's a revelation here Actually, I don't, I don't think this is something that we talk about enough, to be honest, yeah. but it's really not about spouting other people, you know, like what you've read somewhere else and reinventing it. It's 
like high school. We're not plagiarizing, right? So put out what you know and talk about what you know and leave the rest to the experts. Reshare yeah. their information. And I think I think I, I think uh I think too many people are concerned with trying to come from up on high or 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 or, or put themselves on a on, on a pedestal that makes what they're saying more valuable or more important than somebody else. And I think that what a large what a, what what would be better would be if more people just talked about their own experiences just in an honest way, and, and didn't so much make it about um, ego or or place or um, or even reputation, but instead just uh, uh, again some of the the actor groups and things like that. If people just openly shared more experiences, I think people would grow and learn from that uh, how, and how to make what, the decisions that are best for them in those situations. Instead, people tend to just come from more of a place of this is right, this is how you do it, and there is no bend, and that's not real, that's not realistic. I spend all, all day long negotiating and bending the lines of reality, that's what we do. I love that, I love that so much. All right, so Fleece asks, do you ever ask talent, so this is your talent um, that's on your roster, to re-record some with some adjustments after you've listened to what they've submitted to you before submitting to casting? And if so, what kind of adjustments do you typically ask them to make? Fleece is a wonderful talent, by the way. I remember uh, her from my casting days. Um, but uh, it happens multiple times a day, probably multiple times an hour. Um, but yes, all the time. Uh, again, my my strength is, is as a voiceover casting director. Um, and I continue to apply that every day, as does uh, uh, Alyssa Blumenthal in, in, in our interactive department, uh, giving notes back to the actors. We're both credible to do so, and we want to put you in the best position possible to win. Um, it's very, very difficult in the landscape nowadays to, to have to self-direct and have to make these decisions on your own. And sometimes people sometimes people miss something that, that is, the to me, the easiest thing. The first thing that jumps off the script to me um, and, and hits me square in the face, and they miss it. And, you know, I'll, I'll point it out to them, and there's that kind of head shake of like, oh, oh my, how did I walk right by that? And, well, it's because you had a lot of other things going on and a lot of other things to process, and, and it happens. But that's why I'm here in that situation as a safety net. But more often, I'd like to think of my as somebody who's guiding the read to a better place and putting the actor in a better position to win. That is golden for your roster. I mean, the feedback is, is rare in this industry, so that is golden. Um, Andy James asks, as an agent, how important is it to you to vet the castings that you send to your talent? Some agents don't do this, and he wonders, how do you? that's uh, one of the kind of cornerstone principles of the agency. Um, and Andy James is a fine, upstanding man, by the way. Um, but uh, it's one of the cornerstones of our, our, of our, of our approach to things. Um, we're not interested in wasting anybody else's time, and we don't really want our time wasted either. And, and that's not to say that we limit anyone. We're constantly asking people to move their, uh, to expand their range, to, to try some different things, to, 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 to be broader, to be bigger, whatever the case may be. But by and large, we use targeted auditioning. Um, we send auditions to people with the expectation that if they deliver back and make whatever adjustments are necessary or what have you, they're going to get heard at the next level. I'll be that casting or, or production or what have you. Um, we don't just wallpaper auditions out or send them to, to, the, to the roster or to, to everyone of the same gender. Or, and then you read to the bottom and find out that the person's supposed to be Australian or whatever it is and you're not that. Um, if you get it from us, we have every in, intent that you should read for it and you are going to be heard because you're right for it and, and we'll help you get there. But, um, but yeah, no, we don't, no, nothing gets into anybody's hands uh, on our roster uh, unless it, it has that, that backing to it. Perfect. And I just want to ask what your thoughts are. I, I saw a, uh, someone post something today that said they had been reached out to by a casting director to join some group in order to get their castings and they had to pay a fee. What are your thoughts on talent agencies and casting people that I don't think true casting will ever ask you for money, but what are your thoughts on that? Uh, over my dead body. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So if someone's asking you for money to sign with them, it's a no-go. Yeah, absolutely not. Great. Okay. Um, Olivia Hofer asks, Roger, and I have the same question. Will you ever have time again to teach a workshop? <laughs> um, well, uh, uh, so, uh, to be honest, um, SAG-AFTRA actually makes that difficult. 
Um, as the owner of a SAG-AFTRA franchised agency, I'm actually forbidden to, to sort of teach for profit, as it were, um, in any way. And quite frankly, to, to teach otherwise, it, not that I would just teach for profit, but to teach otherwise and then have to prove that I didn't make anything on it becomes kind of a hairy situation. Um, so uh, I, I appear when, you know, when asked and it works for me at, a, at any type of event where I can help uh, spread spread the good word about the business and, and help people out. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not really able to, to, to run anything on my own anymore. And the, the demands of the schedule of the job um, make uh, appearances even like this sometimes difficult. So, Yeah, well, we, we cannot reiterate enough how much we appreciate your time. Oh, no, no, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah, you, you're golden. Um, as a SAG franchised agency... Do you accept non-union talent, and do you accept FICOR talent? Yes, absolutely. We have uh, we have talent of all uh, all makes and models, uh, but we have uh, SAG after talent. We have uh, non-union talent. We do have FICOR talent. Uh, the those decisions are up to the individual. Uh, excuse me, up to the individual talent. Uh, we don't uh, we don't sell anything. We don't in, in, endorse anything. We ultimately support the union in terms of SAG after and what they stand for. Um, sometimes uh, over the, over the years, decisions and deals have been made, um, that have, you know, frustrated many in the business and things like that. We, we're, we won't go into that here, but, uh, um, but ultimately it's still, uh, it's still a guild that has the best intentions and the best, uh, uh, method methodologies to keep actors safe and, uh, and keep, and keep their, their, their future secure, so we support the union to the best of our ability. Um, but that being said, the the amount of non-union work, especially commercially, is so prevalent that it's it's a necessary component to, to the modern agency. Okay. Last question, I think. I, I might have to scroll down. But Simone Sarah, Sarah asks, currently going through um, some construction where her home studio space is, and she's wondering, is this something she should bring up to her agent? She's concerned this will affect her live directed sessions. Uh, absolutely. Um, and Simone Sarah is one of the finest people you will ever, ever want to run into in this in this life. Uh, an absolute delightful human being. Um, but uh, yes, Simone, you should inform your agents, A, because they're good people and because uh, you can communicate with them and B, because they need to know that. Um, most of these bookings, as everybody knows, comes in come in in less than you know with less than thirty hours to go until uh, mouth to mic. Um, so you you can't um, you can't have that be a, a shock to people in the situ in the system. Uh, New York City, Los Angeles, I don't care what big city you're in, the jackhammers will come for your street, or they will blow up the building next to you and build something over the next eighteen months. Um, everybody's home studio goes through it. It is kind of part of the modern era. Hopefully, you have a friend or, or a network that you can of people that you can kind of rely on, um, and, and who might be able to support you during that time. Um, otherwise, you definitely want to have a, a professional studio or two in your back pocket that you're able to pick up in those moments. And yes, it, you may have to incur some financial damage in those moments in terms of what you make on a job. But you know, this is this is the game. These are the risks. Yeah, I have a, a local studio that I reached out to when my internet went out at my house. And two hours before a session and I was able to get over there and, and do it. And so it's a good idea to have that in your network. And guess what? They brought me work since then. So yep. it was a win-win. Um, we have a couple more questions throwing out. Uh, if, oh, we're going to get the questions. Uh, we might as well face the elephant in the room. Are you accepting new submissions? We do not want you to end up with 95 new submissions after tonight. So what, how do you want people to handle that? Uh, yeah, no, we, we we don't ever we, we don't ever turn down submissions. Uh, anybody who uh, who feels that they uh, they would want to be considered by the agency are certainly welcome to to submit to us. Awesome. Yeah. And do you have a form on your website, or like you said earlier, you just want them to email you? Uh, yeah, I, I believe you'll find it through the website, but the general email address to send things like that is projects at accesstalent dot com. Great. Okay. Um, if Let's see. Do you ever ask for exclusivity from your talent? Uh, we ask for it regionally. Um, we don't freelance with talent. We don't keep a freelance stable. We don't believe in it. Uh, we, we find that uh, or just my personal experience, especially from the casting side of the business, is that people who wind up in freelance relationships or freelance stables with agencies, um, they're putting a bunch of people in a bottle and having them kind of fight to see who can climb out of the neck of it. Uh, and that's not really how we approach things. 
Um, we, we'd much rather, again, sign talent who have an individual uh, path to succeed in our roster, meaning we don't sign people who, who sound exactly like somebody else who do, who do exactly what somebody else does. We want everybody to have their own room to breathe and, and, and to perform. So, uh, so that that's kind of the big deal to us. We're we're, we're looking to, to create a palette, more or less, and not sort of just uh, sign tons and tons of people. Great. All right. Well, I have to apologize. I said Olivia Hofer, and it's Oliver Hofer. So I apologize. To yeah. You. No. I, 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 he, Oliver Hofer is a is a hell of a bass player and a and an exceptional VO talent and a, and a and a wonderful guy to drink beers with. I'm I telling know. you, if anybody listening to this podcast wonders in the future if. Uh, Roger Becker cares about the people he works with. You've taught it to us tonight. I, 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 I like I said, I genuinely love the business. I, 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 I applaud the people who who get after it, and, and especially those who do it uh, ethically uh, and and morally properly. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful business. It's, it's given a lot to me and, and provided a lot for my family over the years. And, uh, I, I, I'm very appreciative for the people who, who carried the flag before me and, uh, and who continue to do so in, in all the right ways. Thank you. Um, Xavier Paul asked, can I work with my agent to market myself to new potential clients, like emailing a new client, a new contact and CCing my agent? That would probably be a no. Am I right? I'm not entirely sure. I, I got the whole question. You should be. I mean, you should be able to if you if you have a lead or if you have a relationship with somebody and you're looking for for help to to I don't want to say exploit that, but 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 <laughs> uh, open those open those avenues up. Uh, your agent is is skilled. It should be a skilled uh, tactician in, in that type of work and in that type of uh, uh, of business. So yeah, you should be able to bring that to them and, and have them get after it that way. Um, if I'm understanding the question correctly, uh, but again, that all depends on the, the relationship you have with your agent. Also depends on, again, you know, agencies are all different. They're, they're, they're built differently. They're, they're staffed differently. Uh, they're sized differently. They have different philosophies and different approaches. So I, I really speak from my own, uh, side of things. Again, some, some, some larger agencies, um, may not have the time or may not have the energy, uh, for a pursuit like that. I, I, I can't speak to that. Awesome. I was thinking more in terms of like massive direct marketing efforts and in, including your agent on all of them. But yeah, for the, I think he means, you know, maybe oh, in terms of what you're, in, in terms of what you're generating, like your own self marketing emails. Yeah. Um, you gotta be, you, you gotta be reasonable with that. Um, it's just, it's about traffic. Um, you know, again, every so often you meet somebody or, or you go to some experience like a, you know, a live, uh, chat like this, but back in the old days when we actually would do it in person. Um, and, and then next thing you know, you're getting monthly emails about, uh, again, the, the vacation they took to, to Zuma with their, you know, pet llama. And, and that gets to a point where that's a lot of information that I didn't need. You're not really a client here. So why are you still sending me that? So you got to be careful where those mailing lists go. Um, sometimes people just keep adding to them and they don't really take any accountability for them. And people can quickly say, oh, well, you know, you can unsubscribe and things like that. But, um, you know, if, if I get to a level of having to unsubscribe from, from, <laughs> from something, uh, I'm probably going to remember that name. And it may not be flattering how I remember it. So, OK, here we are. OK, holy moly, Roger, this has been phenomenal. And we've made it we've managed to talk for an hour and we could keep going, but we want to respect your time. So we appreciate you joining us. But before you go. We like to ask our guests three for fun questions, kind of James Lipton, Lipton style. And the first one is, what singer, band, or composer are you enjoying right now? Oh, uh, I'm old school. I don't listen to much uh, post-1979. Uh, uh, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm so I, I still have a lot of Grateful Dead in my rotation, so I'll uh, say that. There you go. Oh, you know what? Do you know the psychedelic furs? I do. I, I just saw them in concert with my husband. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Slightly later on, but closer to my college yep. era. But yes, indeed. Yep. Good stuff. Okay. Well, as soon as you said that, I was like, I bet he's about my husband. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Okay. Number question number two. What podcast, if any, have you been listening to lately? Yeah, no dice. The podcast of my life is two small children, so uh, I don't have time for podcasts, unfortunately. I, 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 enough to enough to keep myself uh, aware. Um, you know, uh, if, if somebody out there is vocally intriguing or has become uh, part of the spec world or things like that, I make myself aware of, of performances. But uh, but no, I don't. I don't have the time to digest that. That's all right. Okay, and the last one. This one's easy. What is your favorite dessert? 
Oh, uh, ice cream cake on birthdays. It's 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 just the it's, it's the it's the best thing. It does, it does, I don't really care whose birthday it is. I don't really care what flavor the ice cream cake is. If if somebody wants to invite me over for ice cream cake on their birthday, I'll pretty much show up. But you know, isn't that hilarious though that you could literally? I say this. My husband and I have the same conversation. Sorry, I'm diverting us for a minute, ladies. We could literally go to Dairy Queen or wherever you. I don't even know. You could, as adults, we could go buy an ice cream cake anytime we want, but we literally will not and only do it <laughs> once a year on a birthday. Right? The, 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 most, the most dangerous thing in the world is that Car- Carvel actually prints a coupon. I forget what it's for, like 3 or $5 off of your next cake, and it's printed on the box. So when you finish the one box, if, if you're smart, you just tear the side of it off and you go right back to Carvel and, and you're wheeling and dealing. Too funny. All right, over to you, JT. Well, thank you again, Roger, for joining us. It has been a wonderful evening, lots of information. And thank you to everybody in the audience for joining us as well. We want to remind everybody that VO Booth Besties is live two days a week. So we invite you to join us Monday nights at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 Eastern, and then again on Thursdays for our VO 101 series at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern. And we also would love for you to connect with each of us on LinkedIn and join the VO Booth Besties Facebook group if you're not a part of it and comment and post. We would love engagement. Uh, Replays are all available to listen to on our website. So be sure to check them out on boothbesties.com, on YouTube podcasts, or anywhere you find your favorite podcast. If you're a podcast listener, be sure to share your comments and like and subscribe. And we love you all. Good night. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to another episode of VO Booth Besties. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast. Well, pretty much anywhere they're playing podcasts. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook so we can keep the conversation going. VO Booth Besties. Yeah, it's a thing. thing.